Hello, uh, good afternoon. Uh, so I'm happy to tell you a little bit more about Matteo, which is a machine translation evaluation framework or interface website. And it was funded by the European Association for Machine Translation with a starting grant. And then we had a larger follow-up grant through Clarence Bridging Gaps call. The project was conceptualized at Ghent University together with my colleagues Ada Tajan and Liva Maken, and then I developed it at Ghent University as well. It's currently hosted at the Claren B Center of Dutch Language Institute, or INT as you may know it, and it's open source and GPL licensed. So that's quite broadly the metadata about the project, but what is it really? What are we doing? What do we want to do? We want to have a simple to use framework or interface where we can evaluate machine translations, but that is also usable or useful for experts. So basically what we want to do is get an idea of how good MT systems are on your own data. So the idea is you get output from your MT system, MT translations, and you want to compare those to reference translations that you have. So the idea is if, if you have, if the translation is close to a human translation, then it's probably a good translation. Um, yeah, so in Matteo we have implemented six metrics and we make the distinction between surface level ones and neural ones. The surface level ones, probably the most well-known one is Bleu that you may have heard of uh, that has been mentioned before at this conference. And there are the main ideas how well does the DMT overlap in terms of tokens or words or sequences of words? Then translation editor rate is a bit more intuitive. Uh, how many words do I have to insert or delete to end up with the correct translation? And then character av is similar to blue, but then on the character level. So if you want to have a broad interpretation of the term, you could call this more morphological than the other ones. Then in terms of neural metrics, um, as you know, when BERT came around, it was revolutionary in many sense, senses. And the people of BERT score thought the same. So instead of just making a comparison between MTs and references on surface level, they want to do this in terms of word embeddings. So basically you're doing again the comparison, but then in latent representations. Uh, very important here is that they do not retrain the model, they just use BERT as a feature extractor, basically. Then uh, there's Comet, uh, which does fine-tune an existing model. Uh, so, and what's special here is that they also use source text as an input. So you have source text, an MT, and a reference translation, put that through a model, and then predict the score, how good the translation is. And then finally, Blurt, it's a bit of a, a special case uh, in the sense that they pre-trained on a lot of synthetic data, and one of the things that they pre-trained pre on was MT signals. And so basically they are teaching a model to predict other metrics, which is kind of interesting if you think about it. And then later on they fine-tuned it on human ratings. So that's quickly a, a lightning course through the, through the metrics that we have implemented. And then you might be wondering, well, uh, maybe this is, Matteo can be useful for me because all these metrics might be complicated, I have to install all of them, I have to run them, maybe the commands are different for every metric, they're spread acro across different GitHub repositories, so it's nice to have in one place. But similarly, if you're an expert user, you, you might struggle with the same issues that we had. So we really built it from two perspectives. On the one hand, research, we wanted to facilitate our own research pipeline as well, and then for teaching, we wanted to have something that was easy to use, that people could get started with, with machine translation as well. So this already brings me to the user interface and <laughs> warning or no, maybe suggestion. Uh, I have the demo running at the bazaar as well, so I highly recommend that you come visit me there because now I'll, I'll just show you, show you a few screenshots which don't tell you perhaps as much. So we have a, a few pages. The main page is basically the meta information that I, I talked about before. And then we have a background information page. So something that I really wanted to avoid was to create a tool and people start using it, but they forget what they're actually doing. What I wanted is that people learn something while helping them, basically. And so on this page, you get a bit of a more information about each metric, you get a reference to the paper, the implementation, exactly the stuff that we use, just so that people can 
have a look at it and learn something. Yeah, for each metric also the, as I said, the implementation that we use and which languages are supported. Then on a, again, a secondary page, uh, we also visualize edit distance. And this is more for educational reasons as well. So you can upload your corpus or your sentences and then look at basically what I mentioned about turf earlier, right? Insertions, deletions, substitutions. Then you can visualize that. Um, so in, in color highlighting, you see what the differences are. Again, this is not groundbreaking or anything, but from an educational perspective, this is something that students really seem to like. Then we're getting closer to the evaluation. Um, so something again that we noticed during our classes was that when we asked the students to do an assignment, they default to Google Translate or DeepL commercial closed source systems. And we thought, well, wouldn't it be great if we offered an other perspective? And so uh, Jörg um, mentioned the no language left behind model. And indeed there are <laughs> models of uh, 54 million billion parameters, but of course that's not feasible <laughs> within uh, our server. So we have a smaller version of this model running just so that students but, or anyone really can generate some translations, baseline translations. And so if you look at screenshots, you can select a language, you can upload your data, push a button and you're done and you get your translations. And then finally, so this will be multiple slides. We come at the evaluation part. Um, yeah, it should be an, an animation, but we'll go step by step. So we start at the uh, bottom left. So first you have the metric selection screen and it's very basic in itself. You just select the metric that you want to have and you're done. And it should be as easy as that. But if you're more of an expert user, you can click open the dialogue and then at the top right, you see all the options that you can choose from that you're probably used to as an expert user. You want to use a different tokenizer, you want to change the engram size, you can do whatever you want that you would normally be able to do. And this is a, an op something that's often left out in tools that exist or existed before. As I said before, what I want to avoid is that people just use the tool and don't learn anything new. Uh, so for all the options, you see a, a question mark next to it. And then if you hover over it, you get a little bit more information about what that option actually does so that you learn a little bit while, while using the tool. So that was that already. So quite easy, I think, or I hope. So you can select what you need and you continue. And then you up, upload the data that you want to compare. So as we said, reference data is what you need. We are reference-based uh, evaluation. Then for some metrics, as com like Comet, as I mentioned, you also have to upload the source file. And then we allow you to upload up to four machine translation systems outputs. Um, and what this means is that you can, uh, yeah, you can upload four, and then the first one, first one will be used as a baseline, and the other three will be compared against it. So it's, especially for research purposes, uh, it's useful to know, okay, so this was my baseline system, and this is my new system. Did I meaningfully or significantly improve over that baseline? And that was that. So you select the metrics, select your data, click a button, and you wait a while, and then you get your results. And so in terms of visualization, you see that for each metric, we have a section, and then for each system, you have a bar. And then so quite easily, visually, you get an idea of how good it is. I have to speed up a little bit. Um, then you get the results as a table as well. So this is more for research purposes, I guess. Uh, if you have worked with Sacre Bleu before, this is, was inspired by Sacre Bleu. So they also provide you with these significancy levels. Uh, but I extended it so it also includes the neural metrics. And so you get significancy levels, you get confidence intervals, and you get the option to just click and copy paste it into a LaTeX right into your paper. No hassles with uh, writing your own LaTeX tables. I'm gonna skip this, but if you know signatures, then that's good. Um, and then we also have sentence level results. Um, so what this means is for some metrics, you can have sentence level scores. And so in this graph on the x-axis, you see your whole corpus, so every sample, and then on the y-axis, your different systems. And you can quite quickly see, oh, there is an outlier here where the system is very doing very poorly or the system is doing very well. 
And again, by hovering over it, you get some more information about those translations. And again, you can download all this sentence level information as well into an Excel file. Then a, a short, briefly for developers, because I really developed Matteo with the idea that I don't want this to be a project. And after the pro project is done, it's done. And the project dies slowly. And I want to really avoid that. So I really hope that people who are working with this, when there is a problem that they submit issues, when they want to add something that they do pull requests, and I know this is asking perhaps a lot, but it's, I really believe in working in that way, more collaboration and building towards one thing instead of everybody doing their own. So from a developer's perspective, Streamlit was mentioned before. It's very easy to install, very to run, very easy to run, which I hope also leads to very good, well, that it's easy to contribute to it. Um, Oh yeah, uh, what's important here as well is that we do everything in memory, and this has advantages and disadvantages, but this is, was done quite specifically because of privacy issues, so we never store any data, it just in memory and then we're done. And um, yeah, we have tests written in Playwright. Uh, adding metrics is quite easy, I'll just, very, oh, three minutes, okay, that's fine. Uh, then uh, adding metrics was a request as well in the early stages of the project. How can I easily add metrics? Or how can I extend Matteo for other tasks? Because now it's, of course, machine translation, but maybe you want to do something with summarization or some other generation task uh, where you have references. And extending it with new metrics is very easy as long as your metric is also in one of the packages that we officially support. So Sacre Bleu or Evaluate, the, the hugging face library. Um, and here's an example just to get an idea of what that looks like adding a metric. So the first part, the data class is optional. It's just if you need to process your, your score in any way. So in this case, I just rebase it to 100. And then the second part is mandatory. And here we add um, the descriptions that were on the description page, if you remember. So the first page that I showed. And then the other parts are, as you can see, a bit down options. So all the options that should appear in the in the uh, metrics, well, in the evaluation screen with the different options. So everything should be defined in one place. When that's done, you're done. It's very super easy. In this case, I've implemented Comet with around 30 lines. So that's what I really want to work towards, that it's very easy for people to add new things so that the project doesn't die too quickly. How can you use it? Uh, scan the QR code, go on the INT website, it's also running on Hugging Face basis, so it's very easy for you to just duplicate it and run your own instance if you want to. And you can host it quite easily through Docker or Python if you're uh, more familiar with that. And with that, again, I would like to invite you to my stand at the Bazaar. And if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you for this. It seems uh, particularly useful for educational settings. and. Um, my question stems also from an educational uh, standpoint. Um, since you presented evaluation methods, how about human error annotation, especially for students in translation, this may be useful. Do you plan to implement this or just the uh, What do you mean then? So for them, the option to annotate data for them so that they can annotate data or what do you mean exactly? Yes, in translation, there are several error yeah. annotation frameworks in terms of quality so that mm -hmm. they could also manually annotate. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's not planned and that's also quite complex from a development point of view, I fear. Uh, so that's not in the pipeline. So this is really focused on automatic evaluation. What we would like to do, but again, the project has finished, so I can can dedicate my personal time to it, but um, what's something that's planned is reference lists. No, oh, sorry, this is not planned, but I would like to do it. Um, so reference list evaluation would be also great to have. So if you are interested in something like that and you're like, oh, yeah, I can spend a week on this and I'm a good programmer, let's do it. Please get in touch so we can collaborate on this. Okay, I have a question. You said it was very easy to um, add additional um, metrics under the condition that they are available under a different package. So if I would want to implement the Rouge metric, for instance, which is sometimes used in summarization, um, would you then, well, is it included in the other yeah. package? 
<laughs> okay, so that, that is easy to, to Yeah, edit. so that's, of course, well, I can talk about this for a long time, but um, so my, I, I know the, the people from Hug and Face a little bit, and so I started a project with porting a lot of MT metrics into Evaluate. And so I put a lot of work in that. And then earlier this year, they said, well, we're not gonna maintain Evaluate too much anymore. And so for me, this was quite devastating because I had put all this work into porting everything to, into Evaluate. Uh, so uh, yes, to come back to your question, if it's an Evaluate, it will be super easy. If it's not an Evaluate, it will be difficult, uh, to be honest. And so that's also one of the reasons that I <laughs> attempted to start my own re-implementation of a whole framework for evaluation, but that was just not feasible. Uh, so, yeah, I don't really have a solution, I fear. It's, it, I really depend on external frameworks, and that's probably something you should try to avoid. That's a lesson learned for me, because when they say, well, we don't maintain it anymore, you're kind of screwed. And, and what... Are there many metrics left over there in Evaluate? No, so I, I ported... Is, is were there already there, for instance? Yeah, so the, the, there's a lot of stuff. NIST is in there, words in there. Uh, Meteor is in there. Meteor also, well, you have Meteor version 1 and Meteor version 1.5. 1.5 is not in there because that's Java-based. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs>